Hello and welcome to Punts and Bunts, the podcast where we talk about football, we talk about baseball. Today is episode four. We're going to be talking about some unwritten rules in baseball. Here with me, I have Robert, I have Shaughnessy. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing pretty good, well. Good. Pretty well. Baseball's back. I'm a little little somber, you know, getting baseball back, but, uh, you know, recent NFL news with Dwayne Haskins uh, tragically passing away. Um, you know, it's anytime you see somebody like that, you know, d- player or person, regardless, it's always disappointing. It's always very sad to see somebody, you know, at that young of an age, um, you know, and then you take somebody who's an athlete, they've got gifts, they've got abilities, they've got places they're trying to go in their life that, you know, it's very, it's very sad. It's, it's, it was very sad news over the weekend to see something like that and just a tragic accident too. Right. Right. Absolutely. I remember watching him a lot when he was at Ohio state. Uh, definitely a fun player to watch. Definitely a, uh, uh, real world-class quarterback, uh, talent athlete. Yeah, I, I was personally, I was curious. I mean, I, I thought he had a real chance, um, in that Steelers QB kind of battle. Mm-hmm. Um, they seemed like they were kind of going to let that play out a little bit. They made a few moves to get some people on board to make a competition. And I was curious to see if he could kind of reclaim some of those, you know, highlights that we saw at Ohio state and that, that got him to be a first round pick. And I was hoping to see him put together, you know, every time you see a, a young quarterback kind of fluctuate up and down on rosters and team to team you kind of want to see them hit that spot where they can kind of get that stride and uh it was just super sad absolutely so moving on from football news a little bit uh we're gonna go on into the unwritten rules uh for those that don't know unwritten rules are those rules in baseball that are obviously unwritten but they're uh I guess they're thought of more as sportsmanship, or at least that's the, that's kind of the idea, I guess, that they're supposed to be, um, I guess, uh, sportsmanship rules. Um, What is a rule that really sticks out to you guys? Mine is, is the don't bunt against a no hitter. Um, You know, that, that can really, piss off the guys on the other side um if their guy is pitching a no hitter i mean you got to get the runs you got to get the people on base um how late into the game do you does that rule supposedly start taking into effect like is it the sixth inning is it seven innings is it the eighth like what never. do you guys think it's so, never uh, the unwritten rules i mean especially like that You know, my thought process is because there's always the argument of like, if it's a close game, people are a little more willing to accept bunting to break up the no hitter. It's like, well, you know, if it's a one run game, that one guy could be the tying run, but people don't like it if it's a bigger run game. But you have to think, though, if you're a team that's getting no hit or a perfect game pitched against, obviously swinging the bat's not working for you. I'm not going to blame anybody from trying absolutely anything to get on base clearly for, you know. 21, 22, 23, 24 outs in that game, depending how deep it is into it, they're swinging and missing. They're hitting into, into, you know, fielders and outs. So if you want to try throwing a bunt in there to see if that works, by all means, regardless of score, you know, you play every game to win and, you know, you play to 27 outs and until there's 27 outs, you play to win by any means necessary. I would agree with that. I mean, I ultimately, I do enjoy seeing the no hitters. Uh, I have seen, uh, one professional um, in person, uh, and that was a 2015 uh, Cole Hamels no hitter against the Cubs, um, and it was uh, I mean it was in, it was an incredible experience to see how dominant of a uh, pitching game it was, and but at that point you say uh, like that Cubs team have been 2015 so like if like say Dexter Fowler comes up and drops a bunt down to try and beat it out, uh, the game was like I want to say it was like five nothing at that point. I see your point, but at the same time it's it's really cool to get that opportunity for, for all the fans as well as the uh, the player and himself to get that no hitter. Uh, so I personally I do that's one of the few unwritten rules that I actually do ultimately support is the no bunting to break up a no hitter. But that's just me. So then at, let me just throw this out there. So then is there a score that then it makes it acceptable? You said five, nothing is like that. At that point, you're just trying to make the other team mad. But like, what if it's two, nothing, one, nothing? Well, so since like, uh, I mean, it's an unwritten rule. So you have to have unwritten standards alongside it. So 
uh, as for that, I mean, I, I'm thinking you have to look at the aspect of uh, – I think you have to kind of go with a, a comfortable lead, at least five runs, if not higher, just because at that point, then no number of runners actively on base can tie that game. Um, but it, that's just exactly, that's kind of how I feel about it. The thing about it is though, like, like you're saying as a fan, it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing. It's a story to tell when you see a perfect game, when you see a no hitter, you, I mean, you just stop. I did a game. You remembered that specific game, who they're playing when it was, because it was an event, but doesn't it almost like if you were to find out that a guy, let's say a guy was going to bunt and somebody in his, his dugout went, no, 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 don't do that. It's unwritten rules. You know, wouldn't you feel like you've been kind of gypped? Wouldn't you feel like it's kind of a fake no hitter if they didn't try absolutely everything possible to get a hit? Cause at a certain point it's, you can call it a gimme. If you're going to say, well, you can't hit that specific way that does lead to base hits, that does lead to runs, and just say you can't do that anymore, doesn't it feel like it's it's kind of hollowing out? It's like, well, if I've got a no-hitter going in the seventh inning, you know, if you hit a home run, it doesn't count because that's not cool to hit a home run and break it. Like, if you start putting arbitrary rules in what somebody else can and can't do, I feel like that ultimately takes away from the accomplishment itself. Because a no-hitter, a perfect game, are supposed to be that, a perfect game. You pitched a perfect game. You didn't pitch a perfect game when they weren't playing at their fullest or weren't trying the hardest. You pitched a perfect game. You didn't need help. You did it yourself. And it's supposed to be hard. A perfect game and no-hitter is supposed to be incredibly difficult. And if you don't want somebody to bunt, throw a better pitch. I mean, I think that's fair. You just have a lot of, uh, I mean, the, the amount of players that actually can regularly bunt to get a base hit on a normal day is few and far between in the league. I mean, you have uh, a handful of play, but I mean, going a few years ago, you had pretty much D Gordon and uh, Rajay Davis, like the two prime, prime guys in the league that could do it. Um, but nowadays it's like, it's, you got the occasional guys. They'll do it. It's not a, just a regular thing. Um, like, I mean, you're not going to see Miguel Cabrera drop a bunt and, W- uh, waddle the first <laughs> but uh but then i mean i do see your point it's like if you have like we got uh cabrera who's inching closer to that three thousand hit point so to your point it's like saying it's a, he's at 29.99 and okay let's just let's just lob one into him let him get that base hit just so he can get that three thousand hit wouldn't that feel like it's not real wouldn't that feel like it's a uh... It's I don't think it makes it not record. real just because you got 2,999 other hits to prove that he definitely made his way there. Um, and much like a perfect or a perfect game or no hitter scenario. I mean, he got, if you're taking that one out in a pers- perspective, he got 26 others. I mean, I don't call that like a, a gimme or a, no, uh, anything like that. Well, then we can move on to the three. Uh, well, what's your don't... take? Oh, okay. Well, where do you, where do you land on it? Me, I mean, I, I I said it a little bit earlier, but you know, it starts getting tricky with all these rules when you start. And like Robbie said earlier, it's like the arbitrary. Okay, you, you have so many different scenarios where maybe it could be acceptable one way, and then all of a sudden, one little thing changes, and now it's not acceptable the other way. I at that point, I would just say it's either acceptable or not acceptable and then if i have to go with those two then i'm just going to say it's acceptable uh that's just when you start getting too intricate with the little specifics then it's there's always going to be one reason why it it was okay and one reason why it wasn't so i would just say just it's okay with me (laughs) like (laughs) all right and and, and before we jump into the next uh next scenario be uh be kind of wrong not to bring up uh, no hitters and perfect games and not refer to the, the probably the greatest pitched game in professional baseball ever happened this week with uh Roki Sasaki's 19 strikeout perfect game in the Nippon League in Japan. I mean that's just an incredible first first uh, perfect game in the league since 1994 and the uh 16th in league history and then on top of that uh it's uh it's just uh 19 strikeouts it ties a, a league record. I mean in big leagues we've seen only 20 ever in a nine inning game you've seen a couple more after nine innings but just to, right. to factor in you get 19 strikeouts plus um a perfect game and striking out 13 batters in a row is just incredible that's crazy so a, th- a thought occurred to me and, and maybe this is something somebody in the comments can let us know if they know better but like the unwritten rules thing is that a thing in like you know japanese baseball like are in other countries that are big into baseball is there really much of unwritten rules or are they very much like the rules of the game say you can do this therefore you can do this or i mean do do 
I mean, like I said, maybe somebody can let us know because I'd be really curious to find out if if other countries, you know, major countries that play baseball, you know, maybe in Latin America, where kind of the unwritten rules start to come around. Are they more of a a North American baseball cultural thing because it's kind of the old school baseball days of, you know, don't frustrate the pitcher, don't make the pitcher mad. I I just I'd be curious to see kind of where like that lands on the terms of other countries that play baseball. Yep, yeah, but I mean, I think especially something like this, though, that we're discussing specifically with the bunting, um, in terms of Japanese baseball, bunting is as as important as a home run. I mean, they over there they bunt all the time. That's part of the game. I mean, they have the All Star game where they have the the bunt. Actually, might be Korean baseball, but still, they um, a lot of them they're they're kind of swinging as they come out the box, and they will pretty much be running towards the base as they're dropping the bunt down. Um, so it's, uh, in, in Asian baseball, bunting is a lot, a much more important part of the game, especially in today's day with the, uh, the sad side of baseball, having the DH. <laughs> so then, you know, do you take where, so kind of like to Jose's point of like the intricacies of like, what's allowed, not allowed, you know, maybe a Japanese player is coming and, and bunting's part of their game. Bunting is part of their skill set. something in their, you know, their baseball card mentions, you know, how many successful, you know, singles off bunts are they allowed to bunt regardless of scenario now if you're up 15-0 but you've got a japanese player who's built their career partially on that skill it kind of like you know just kind of reiterating jose's point of like it's okay here and here and here and here but not here and here or if this is like that you know I, like like jose said when you start to mix too much of that in it kind of points out kind of how silly some of them are when you can kind of pick and choose a scenario and go that one not that one and the only thing different is you know, what that baseball player's career numbers look like. Gotcha. Yep. I, I, I agree. Um, also one thing to build off onto this, uh, Roki Sasaki's, uh, perfect game. Uh, I just did a little research here, uh, 105 pitches. So 19 strikeouts, only 105 pitches. That's incredible wow. in itself. <laughs> I think that's what's most incredible. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was just, that's efficient. I, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, what was his first, first pitch strike percentage? I would have, assume it's a uh, pretty high up there i don't know if this article has it but uh we can definitely uh bring that back at a different yeah. time well well if you guys are looking at that i i just wanted to bring back the point that sean was asking on the the half of of the unwritten rules for example in latin america now i haven't been to the caribbean i dominican venezuela or anything like that i've been to a handful of games in mexico uh when my family would go down there and just the the atmosphere is is different in the way that they are they play really loose as in as in i don't know things aren't not saying that baseball is uptight maybe some people can think of it that way maybe there's a better word to use than uptight but they 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 play the game like and they're noticeably having fun and it, it, there's a little bit of i don't know like you can tell the dudes are having fun and i know that's been a big thing in the past what 3 4 years in the MLB but i don't if i had to guess i don't think that they have maybe as many or maybe they don't take them as seriously those unwritten rules as they would or as they do some people i guess here in the mlb uh but that's just my takeaway from the handful of games i've seen played in mexico gotcha gotcha all right well then let's move on to the next uh next unwritten rule to discuss here so well it it looks like maybe we'd be here all night if we we don't need to go every single one one. so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna read a handful off and then we could as as they kind of uh you know pique our interest like we we have that big one like the the do not swing ahead uh do not swing when you are ahead 3-0 and your team is significantly significantly ahead like uh have a has a comfortable lead um don't spend your time admiring a home run that you hit um, and that see that one that one to me it's just like it's if you hit it do it i mean but the thing is though i have no problem with that but if your team is down four to nothing and you're there pimping your home run just 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 round the bases just like like it's just come on it's worry about what's actually I, the active part of the game 
I would say I agree with you on that point. Like if you're if you're losing nine to zero and you hit a blast, don't sit and stare at it too long. I would say, you know, ultimately, like a home run in baseball in an extremely team sport, a home run is one of the very few like solo maneuvers you can do that like you know you did yourself you know a pitcher throws a perfect strike there's a lot that goes into there's the throw there's the catcher making sure they make the catch calling the right sign there's a little you know somebody makes a great throw to first you know there's a lot of people involved where a home run there's a lot of just like individual Mm -hmm. you know excelling so i mean even if you're losing a lot you know i i I hate to use like sometimes it's okay because that's kind of defeats the whole purpose of saying the unwritten rules but i still think it's fine. You know, if, if you hit a wall scraper and you really stared at it, you more look like an asshole, I think, than you do necessarily have broken a rule. But I mean, you know, hitting a home run has to be one of the most satisfying things in professional sports. You know, it's, it's you, you literally hit something so hard, the field of play cannot contain it. So, I mean, I have a really hard time ragging on guys who want to look at just a beautiful hack because it is you know if you were to take you know a a major league player how many just like beautiful blasts they have in their career maybe they have a bunch of home runs but in terms of just like buttes of hits you know i don't mind them looking at it you know it's it's something i don't like when they stop and look at it i don't mind the kind of hit walk and then go into the slow jog but the guys who just hit it and stop it's that's a little bit less of an unwritten rule more of like you got to run the bases you know, I don't know that that's so much a problem of like, you shouldn't stare at it so much as it's like, when you hit the ball, you go, that's how you play the game. And, and I mean, also just to build off that there, I mean, if it, regardless, it doesn't matter if it's a, uh, um, if you're down nine, nothing or five, four, um, if it's a milestone home run, like your 500th, 600th career home run, eh, stare all you want. That's something that not many players have done over the course of the the history of the game. And yeah, just, just, you enjoy that moment. I uh, I've always oh go ahead. Uh, uh no, I was just going to bring up uh for those of you that don't follow baseball doesn't exist on YouTube. It's a really cool baseball channel that like really does deep dives into like single players or single moments. But just real quick, they released one on Bryce Harper a few days ago and they told a little story about how when he moved up to play in junior college he graduated early got his jd went and played in junior college apparently he hit a ball like over 500 feet or at least that's what the legend is and one of the opposing catchers told him that he sh- he needed to stop uh like pimping his home runs and like staring at them and that supposedly it's reported that he turned to him and said fuck you I hit the ball 500 feet. I do what I want. So <laughs> at that point, at that point, I mean, do whatever you want. Yeah. Like and that catcher grew up to be Buster Posey. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're that good, like, yeah, obviously yeah, it's he, not the majors, but like when he was just clearly that much better than the competition, like mm-hmm. it's literally just like a kid's game at that right, point. Right. All right. Um, well, I think we, uh, can look go down the line here if you're good with that yeah uh don't really don't really quick yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh just kind of my my thought process i've told you guys this in the past on on unwritten rules as a whole you know usually the repercussion for breaking unwritten rules you get thrown at or somebody on your team is getting thrown at right that's kind of the you break the rule expect somebody to get a ball thrown at them it's always been my opinion that throwing at somebody for breaking an unwritten rule is far more disrespectful to the game than breaking an unwritten rule saying like, I'm going to physically hurt you because you hurt my feelings, which actually is okay. And allowed in this game is always seemed a lot more unsportsmanlike than whatever rule they broke. Fair somebody enough. hits a three Oh bomb up 10 runs for a grand slam. And you hit the next guy with a 90 mile an hour projectile. That's, that's more, that's more disrespectful to the game. Yeah, because at least hitting a home run. So, I mean, even even that part aside, even the the injury risk. Just like you want to talk about respect of the game, that's what the unwritten rules are are uh, gentlemen rules of respecting the game. It's always been, in my opinion, that the throwing at somebody as a repercussion is far more like unsportsmanlike than whatever the rule they broke is. Whatever the unwritten rule is, isn't more disrespectful than throwing at somebody for it, especially when it's a different guy. You know, I I. I'm not a big, I, I don't really 
find an excuse anyway to hit a guy. But like when you hit the next batter who didn't hit that home run, he didn't stare at it. He wasn't John on you at the base path. He's just next in the order and he gets plunked. That's all. I've always thought that was Bush. That's soft. I've always that's thought soft. that's, you know, if, if you're going to be pissed off and go, I'm going to hit him, at least save it for the guy coming back around in the next couple innings. You know, if you really are that upset by it, take it out on the guy who did it. Agreed. Um, just a, a couple other ones that we have here. I, I, I'm not familiar, maybe not familiar, but I haven't really seen this one as much or like knowingly. Uh, do not swing at the first pitch of an at bat uh, if the pitcher has allowed back to back home runs. I'm not uh, familiar with that yeah, at all. It sounds right. like a bunch of bull crap because you yeah. don't want that third one in a row. So skip that. It's not even worth our time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's not, one of those they wrote right. that down without it actually having happened. <laughs> like it happened once and they went, don't do that. Write that down as an unwritten rule. It'll never come back up again. <laughs> Right. It's someone who is salty. They got hit three home runs in a row <laughs> <laughs> on three consecutive pitches. Right. right. Uh, uh, do not work the count. If your team is winning or losing by a significant number, that's kind yeah. of, yeah, that's, that's soft too. Uh, how about don't rub the spot. Uh, where you were hit by a pitch if it hurts i'm gonna run <laughs> <laughs> i feel like when the handful of times that i've gotten hit you know just whatever playing in the dumb little leagues that we play in but i just don't rub it just because i don't want to look soft <laughs> just because i but like it's not like uh it's not like an unwritten rule like oh respect type of thing i just don't want to <laughs> but also I, like it's a little bit like the audacity to like hit somebody with a ball at 90 plus miles an hour in the back. Don't you dare now touch it. You know, I just hit you with that as hard as I could. Now don't touch it. Like, it's like, I'm sorry. Fuck you. You just hit me with the ball. I do whatever I want. Right, I'm going to yeah. cast the honest flex on you when I come back around the plate. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, do not walk in front of a catcher umpire when walking into the batter's box. And I feel like that's just something I don't, ever consciously would tell myself don't walk in front of them it's just kind of and maybe i've just been conditioned not to by just watching tv but yeah like, you don't cross over home plate to go to the batter's box like, yeah um, i always felt like i did that not so much out of any sort of like respect for anybody more so like i don't want to like kick up the lines of chalk like i don't want to like walk across like if, if they've chalked out the batter's box and the foul lines i don't want to kicking you know i'd rather kick dirt on that as i'm running down the baseline i don't really want to like step through and kick all that up in the front plus like if you think about the action of just like walking it feels awkward like walking right in front of everybody to get right. in the batter's box just seems a little like seems fine awkward. to me i mean yeah, you're no, better than everyone else. Just walk, just walk in front. You're better than everybody else. Show who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's a power start, move. Uh, I want to start doing that. Yeah. Uh, don't stand. <laughs> it's like it's like tapping yeah. the the catcher's shin guards with your bat. I've always felt that was yeah. kind of a power move. It's like <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. You know. Oh, then you got to walk. You got to make sure you walk the plate with your with your arms like Conor McGregor. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do not stand on the dirt near home plate when the pitcher is warming up. So technically like almost yeah, in the batter. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's, that's, that's just kind of, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. I, if anything, that's, that just seems like a safety rule. You know, he's warming up. So in theory, he may be a little bit wild. And if you're going to stand up there, you're going to risk getting plunked right. by accident. And yeah, normally you're taking, outside. you're normally taking swings or something. So you're not going to be like right yeah. there taking swings while he's exactly. So uh, yeah, I don't know that, that do not assist a member of the opposing team. I mean, like in terms of what, like, I mean, you're going to, you're just going to like say, Oh, just get me out. Or like, if they fall down, like, and if the play's over, you can not help them up. I mean, especially in right. today's society of sportsmanship, you'll see that way more of now. It's like, ha you fell, suck it. <laughs> you just like walk, step over them. Uh, yeah. uh, cleats on their hand. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, the last one for the hitters would uh, that we have here is do not speak to a pitcher who is in the process of throwing a no hitter. That's just a superstition thing. I think it depends on the pitcher. Um, but yeah. And then and, uh, I got one more that's actually yeah, yeah. not on this list here. Yeah, no problem. Um, the uh, the one that I've seen before, and it, I can't remember when it happened, but it was uh, do not step on the mound when we're going back to the dugout. The Dallas Braden thing. I think that was, yeah. Which that one, like to me, is again, it's like a superstition thing. It's like a, it's like a get on my face type of deal. But 
that's one that I remember offhand. Or that started a little bit of a, a chirping match. So right. yeah, and that's for the runner that's like heading back to the dugout and Correct. not to go over the mound. Yeah. So like if you're on the third base dugout, you're running to first, and you get out, and you just run across the middle of the infield and just step on the mound. Right. So, um, and these are for the pitcher, and these are just kind of a little weird because I don't know. Uh, it says a pitcher who is removed from the. Oh, well, I agree with this one. A pitcher who is removed from the game in the middle of an inning must stay in the dugout until the end of the inning. I think it's fair. I mean, you you yeah. see, you, it's your mess. Why don't you want someone else to clean it up and don't just be like, oh, screw y'all. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just go straight to the showers. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> You like Sorry give up about a home it. run, yeah. Give up a home <laughs> run and like leave like two guys on and then get taken out. You just like go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they need to clean themselves off if they're making such a big mess. <laughs> uh, Nothing to see here. <laughs> and uh, a pitcher should not indicate displeasure if one of his fielders uh, commits an error. I think that one's overall fair. I mean, there's some situations where the player just clearly makes a big a mistake and maybe the pitcher and the fielder just don't have good terms with each other. But for the most part, like, I mean, why would you let the batter hit the ball? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I've I've been on teams where that has happened and it just kind of... It, it just brings it, out the demeanor of the team. It kind of brings a weird vibe for the rest of the game. I don't know. I also I, think I, it would invite like your team, like, okay, so you're pitching and I muff a ground ball. And then you're like, you know, God damn it, Shauna. So you need to get that. And then you give up a home run on the next at Right. Exactly. I'm definitely going to be chirping back to you. <laughs> and then I'm, that's you know I mean? like, not what you want. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I feel like, but it's like, there's no way if you get on me and then you do something stupid, like give up a walk or you hit, give up a home run. I'm totally talking some Guilty. shit to you now. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I remember uh, I saw a clip recently, or may have seen it a while ago, but it came up again on my feed recently of a little league game. You had this little chubby kid on second base, and the the batter uh, dodges the pitch coming at him, and then the the guy at second base just screams at this whiny prepubescent voice, like "Let it hit you." <laughs> 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 I don't know if you guys have seen that one, but I'll definitely yeah. have to share that one and yeah. uh, we can share it in a comment somewhere as well. Yeah, um, but that's, that's a, a definitely a golden moment. Right. So, and, and uh, the one that we have here is for the fans and that's just kind of another superstition thing. Cause it's kind of like the same as one of the ones earlier. It's uh, do not discuss a no hitter that is currently in progress. Yeah, see, that's that's never held because I've been to I've probably seen at least three no hitters in progress, including the one that I went to actually completed. And all the the whole time you have fan, fans talking like he's got no hitter going on. Oh, he's got no hitter. It's just you just hear it all the time. And you're not you're just, because someone looks at the scoreboard and like the bottom of the sixth inning, you're like, oh, there's a zero there. Like, right. so right. it's that's never going to be stopped. Right. So. So talking about these unwritten rules kind of started getting us to think about these some organizations have rules themselves. Um, if anybody's familiar with what happened with Freeman and Acuna a few days ago, Acuna was on his Instagram live with uh, a guy. It was kind of like an interview it was in Spanish. And the guy asked him if he was going to miss Freeman. And normally, you know, like the, the politically correct or just political answer would just be like, oh, yeah, you know, wish him best of luck with the Dodgers, you know great competitor, blah, blah, blah. Instead, he said, no, <laughs> he wasn't going to miss him. And the guy, the interviewer was kind of like, what, why? And he's like, um, we weren't close as close as we got is that we played for the same team and played in the same stadium. And, uh, obviously which is then, cold. Right. And he said this in Spanish, which may have made it easier for him to take back due to the population. A lot of, I mean, I mean, not everybody speaks Spanish, but um, I do. Uh, he took it back. <laughs> he said it. He, that's not what he said, but it definitely was what he said. Um, he, ta <laughs> he talks about he talked about that Freeman was one of those guys, one of those veteran guys that when he was coming up, when Acuna was coming up, uh, he was Freeman was like enforcing these organizational rules as far as like he 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 said not having eye black during batting practice not having his sunglasses cover uh, the A on his hat, sort of things like that. So um, Acuna just said that he's going to be a veteran someday, and that stuff's not going to fly uh, 
what do you guys think about that i mean it's just i i got really nothing but <laughs> kind of I mean, just like i guess take a i mean act like you've been there kind of type of thing i mean i don't know if freeman how freeman acted really we weren't there obviously we just can go take these comments as with, with a grain of salt all we can um but yeah it's just act like you've been there i guess is the best way to put it well freeman I mean, didn't deny them, him yeah <laughs> But I feel like if they're organizational rules, like if, if they're actual, I mean, and we're not talking organizational unwritten rules, which is kind of the, the no eye black thing. And that was no eye black at BP, right? That wasn't that That's how that I one said, was. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine that the Braves have written down somewhere. If you're a player of the team, you can't wear eye black at BP. That one sounds a little more like a, like a team unwritten rule, like an organization's unwritten rule, the like no sunglasses over the logo, or like when teams say like, you're going to dress in a suit for travel. Some of those things, I can see those being things because it's like you're representing the team, you are, you know, ultimately, you are on our team wearing our logos, our colors, because you are a representation of us in the talent we put together. So certain things like wear a suit, you know, if you're covering up the, the logo with your sunglasses, what, cause you're in the outfield and you just don't have them on. I mean, I can't imagine anybody in the organization is going to pull you aside and go, we don't do that. But if like you're in an interview and you decide to throw that up, it's like, you, you know, you're representing that team. I can see some of those being a thing, you know, you're, you know, you, you want to, you want to put the best appearance forward for a team. Some of them like no eye black. It's like that. I can't imagine the organization has that as a rule. That feels like, something players or a culture of players have put together to get that way and just i I can't even fathom the reasoning behind that one yeah uh there is an interview with freeman where he was asked about it like the next morning uh with like mlb network or something and he didn't deny it he said that yeah that the whole no eye black at practice and that they're just organizational rules that you don't cover the logo on the hat so his Freeman's story checked out with what Acuna was saying. Acuna said that that there were guys that literally took him back into the dugout, into the clubhouse, and were like wiping the eye black off his face for him. And that he just mm-hmm. couldn't say anything because he, I guess, wasn't a veteran. So, um, But then it's almost like the, you know, to call back on that Bryce Harper quote of like, I can right. hit the ball 500 feet. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Right. You know, there's a little bit like, even if you're a young guy in the organization, you know, if you're brought in because you have superstar talent, even if you're young, you know, is there a little bit of grace of like, well, he's obviously doing the right thing. He's playing right ball. You know, do we really get to treat him differently because he's younger or, you know, because if he's a superstar right out of the gate, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to listen to some guy who's hitting sub 200 on how I should be wearing BP, you know, eye black. You know, if you're a superstar and it's something like that, it's like, I don't know why somebody else would get to tell them that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, which then got us thinking a little bit about like the whole Yankees rule with, uh, no facial hair, uh, no hair below the shoulders. Um, Don Mattingly, when he was on the Yankees, he wasn't a fan of it. And now he's implemented a similar rule on the Marlins, uh, just seems kind of funny to me it's just it's just an old school rule it's kind of dated i don't know it's kind of unnecessary in my opinion but although in that that case you shouldn't have allow even having the fans in the stadium with uh facial hair or long hair (laughs) below the shoulders all all women must get their hair cut if it's below their shoulders so yeah (laughs) at least that one like checks out with like the traditions of the yankees you know no names on the back because you're you know you're a yankee you're first so i can you know at least it checks out and you can you can link together the logic of how they got there you know right. the team is the team is obviously you know has all the success in their history because they have a really regimented way of they they present themselves you know the yankees have always been the yankees that's one of the most recognizable logos probably in the world so I don't mind a team trying to make sure they keep up the standards they've kept with stuff like that. Now, you know, with some of these, you know, you could probably, you know, get into almost legality. You know, there's, you know, there's been not to call in and get into like HR policies, but there's been, you know, you know, case studies about how much an employer can force like beard restrictions and hair restrictions because some religions 
have their own restrictions on how you have to have facial hair or hair on your head that, you know, what takes precedent? If you're a player and, and your religion calls for you to have a beard or to have a certain type of hairstyle, you know, who is it for your baseball team to tell you no? Fair enough. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's, like you said, it's basically employer. Like, yeah, I agree with that. Right. And I guess the last thing that we wanted to just uh, talk about were uh, the fun written rules that we, uh, <laughs> was Sean coined that, that phrase, uh, which is basically unwritten rules for sort of for the fans, uh, but like fun ones. So uh, what was your example, Sean? Like you see all the time, like if, if somebody in the crowd catches a ball, foul ball, a fly ball, I guess not a fly ball, but a home run ball in their beer, you have to chug the beer. It's just kind of like, if you have that, you got to drink the beer. Or even if you make like a catch, you've got a beer in your other hand, you got to drink the beer, you know, and that's just kind of one of those. That's what everybody wants to see. You know, as soon as the camera goes on that guy with the cup and the beer in it, it's like, chug it. You hear the crowd start to go. So it's just one of those like unwritten rules in the stands. You know, you catch a beer or you catch a ball in your beer, you drink your beer, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's fun little things. Now, some of them I know are controversial, such as like if the stadium is doing the wave, like it's very divisive. Some people will say you do not do the wave and some people say <laughs> you definitely do the wave. So that's probably a, a fun written rule that somebody in the comments is going to start debating on whether or not it's no oh, way. It's a stupid unwritten rule. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will let me know that it's really dumb. I personally think the wave is a blast. I think it's fun to watch it go around the stadium. I can see as a player not being a fan because it's kind of distracting or, uh, but I think it's fun. I don't know that, you know, it's really people who are so against it. I don't really understand why it's like, if I'm the guy that's, them. I'm the guy that sits in the stands and I'm like this when it runs in the way. I'm and, like, really? And that's what? totally fine. <laughs> You're just breaking the fun written rule. And, and by all means, you should expect somebody in the crowd to throw a 90 mile an hour fastball at you. Do I get to keep the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's another one that we had kind of mentioned is like uh, another rule is when let's say you're a grown man like us and a ball lands 10 feet from you and on the other side of the ball is a seven-year-old kid going for the same ball are you supposed and you get to it first are you supposed to give it to them i mean so on this one this one i'm torn about i mean i feel like if you get the ball regardless of your age you should be able to get the ball no doubt but i mean i'm not going to be out there outrunning kids shoving kids throwing an arm into kids trying to take a ball like so but if if I'm just sitting in a, like in a lawn at a minor league baseball game. There's no kids around me and a liner comes and comes right at me and I get it. I'm going to keep that ball. Uh, I mean, but I've, I've definitely given probably about as many balls away as I have uh, caught at games um, at minor league games. I've never caught a ball at a pro game, but uh, at minor league games, I've definitely given balls to, to kids before. And they, uh, they always get a big smile on their face. It makes them pretty happy. Especially when you see like a kid uh, get up at for a ball and then you, they see you pick it up and they walk back to their seat all sad. I mean, then kind of like, uh, uh, I, I don't want to mouse. I'm going to do this. I'll sit on my shelf and like, I'm just going like, man, that is such a cool baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's up to the discretion of the guy who has the ball. I mean, if you want to give it to a kid, great. If you don't, fine ultimately you don't know what the situation for that person is like us we at a ball baseball game look like everyday regular adults but you know mm -hmm. i have a little kid at home i would love to bring a baseball home to my son and be like hey i got this at the game for you keep this this is a genuine ball but at the crowd everybody just sees some 28 year old guy going no i'm gonna keep the ball fuck these kids and that's not <laughs> what it is it, it, but that's the assumption but i mean if you want to give a ball to a kid give a ball to a kid i don't really have i don't really like it when you like see like like robbie said you know they're like pushing kids or they're running for the ball if you get the ball and it's not like you're knocking people over for it. It's your ball to have. Now, if you're bowling over the eight-year-old for the ball, you're kind of a dick whether or not you give the ball to him or not. <laughs> but, I mean, if you got the ball, it bounces to you, or everybody misses and it rolls right to your feet and you pick it up, that's your baseball. Do with yeah, it whatever well, you want. I was, at a, I was at a minor league game once and uh, was standing in the lawn and was just standing there. I think I was sitting with a beer in my hand. And uh, the one of the bullpen guys at the team picked up the ball and just just threw it into the crowd because it was a foul ball. And I uh, and I'm, you know, I'm amongst a bunch of children. So I just reached my arm up and I catch the ball and I'm like, well, I feel like a total doucher. So I had to find some kid <laughs> to give it away. So like all the kids are like, can I have it? Can I have it? And I found the one kid that wasn't like begging me for it and gave it to him. So um, 
But yeah, I mean, I, but also to build off this, if you get drilled by a foul ball, you deserve the ball. So if like I see someone get drilled in the arm by a, like a screaming line drive and it lands at my feet and I pick it up, I'm going to give it to the person who got hit by it because they wore it. <laughs> that's that's their ball. They deserve it. Um, see, my, my very was... first baseball game, the very first game I was sitting in the uh, Wrigley Field bleachers and my dad and I had just sat down. We just got into the game and he goes, now you need to keep an eye on because BP is going going on and not five seconds later, i looked up at a line drive home run coming right at me i threw my hand up smacks me in the hand hits me in the shoulder goes behind me and i turn around to get it and this lady snatches it and walks away and i and I, at the time i was 15 years old a kid i was still a kid nobody gave me the ball and i actually got hit by it too and i never got that ball but i did get one later that kosuke fukudome he was warming up in the outfield and he looked at me and kind of gave like here you go and tossed it right to me and that kind of made up for it. But I mean, if you get hit by it, I feel like it's kind of the good guy to, thing to do to give it to somebody. If they got, if they got beamed by it and getting into the sands, uh, here's a consolation prize. You can have the ball. Uh, see, see, there was one, point. I remember I was in the bleachers during BP and I think Albert Pujols may have hit it. It was definitely on the, uh, definitely against the angels. Um, but uh, it, this lady was sitting there looking at her iPad in the bleachers, not even paying attention. The ball lands right on the iPad, shattering the screen. She was all upset <laughs> and she didn't even get the ball. Some other kid took it and ran away. And I thought it was fantastic. It's like, why do you have an iPad in the bleachers anyways? That's your own fault. <laughs> that's the baseball gods leveling things out a little bit. Yeah, yeah that's a, that, was a, that was a great moment. Like I, my mom and I were in the bleachers. I was probably, I think I was like probably 20 at the time. We were just sitting there. We were both just cracking up. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah like yeah just going back to the little um little bit uh i've never gotten a ball and so like at that point right exactly (laughs) at that point like i guess to the average person if they saw me get the ball that i guess i've like aged out because i'm not ever allowed to get a ball unless it's there's like nobody around me and it comes right to me and i don't look like a dick that didn't give it to the kids sitting behind me or anything like that. Well, we'll tell you what, Jose, Sean and I will take you to a King County Cougars game. Oh, if we get go. a ball, we'll get you that ball. We'll give, we'll give you the ball and we'll, we, you will get to keep your first ever ball from a baseball game. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, I think that, uh, that concludes this episode. Um, be sure to follow us on all the socials, Instagram, uh, Twitter at punts and bunts. Make sure you let us know which uh, which unwritten rules you agree with, which ones you disagree with, whose take you agreed with. Maybe you didn't agree with any of us. Uh, let us know why. And All also right. let us know yeah. uh, if anybody can think of some more of these fun written rules of just kind of fan unwritten rules for a game. You know, I'd be curious to see what other people have kind of come up with or heard or seen and you know it's i think there's a whole new category of uh, unwritten rules we can start talking about with these i agree i agree all right if there's nothing else from you guys then good we're out see ya all right see you guys later